come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense. The fear you can hear. Vengeance is traditionally supposed to be the province of the Lord. But too often, individuals decide that they will take it upon themselves to mete out punishment to those who may richly deserve it. The results are almost always devastating. As witness... You ask me how we're going to kill him, Harry. We're going to shoot Jason Grant in the belly. Is that painful? Very. You don't like the idea? I like it so much, it scares me. Then it's a deal. You're with me? I'm with you. All the way. Have you thought about a place, a time for the... The, uh, the uh, execution? Yeah. You bet. Our mystery drama, Dead for a Dollar, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Paul Hecht. I'll return shortly with Act One. In today's world, the golden key to success is too often unfortunately attained through absolute ruthlessness and utter disregard of ethics, morality, and the rights of others. Jason Grant was a symbol of such success, a multimillionaire and a power in the world of international finance. Grant sat on a golden throne built on the ruin of many lives and many hopes. Along with his millions, Jason Grant had earned the hatred of more people than he bothered to remember. This day, two men in whom the fires of hatred burned sat in a bar. Now the to toast, Harry. Why not? To Jason Grant. May his soul rot in hell. Amen. <clears throat> How long has it been, Harry? How long has what been? How long have we been meeting in this bar and drinking the same stupid toast? Let's see. The niece divorced me in 69. Yeah. I ran into you here about a year later, so I'd say two years, give or take a couple of months. <laughs> what do you think Jason would say if he heard us? No folly it went. Here we are, two men acting like a like a couple of sniveling school kids. Now what do you suggest we do? Kill him. Just like that. Kill him. As slowly and as painfully as possible. I want to hear Jason Grant screaming and begging for mercy. Just like my brother screamed when Jason left him to bleed to death on the road to Busan while, while he bugged out to save his own skin. Yeah, we'd be sure and get caught. So what? So what? Yeah, so what? We'll just tell our story to a jury. We can... That still doesn't give us the right to kill. Look, does Jason Grant deserve to die for what he did to you? It wasn't only breaking up your marriage. You and Jason were partners. And he not only stole Denise, but the business you'd built yeah, up for I 11 know, years. I know what he did. So what did you do about it? Wynn, get off my back. You're so dead set on killing him. Why don't you go ahead and do it? Because I need you, Harry. For what? Look, Harry, I'm willing to go to prison. But I don't see any sense in walking in if there's a way of staying out. How am I going along with you? Help keep you out of jail. We'll give each other an alibi. We'll swear we were together when Grant is killed. Have you thought about how we'd do it? I have. You see this? Hey, put that away. It's so uptight. It's a gun I picked up in. I figured I might have a use for it someday, so uh, so I kept it in good condition. Put it away. Harry, you asked me how we were going to do it. We're going to shoot him in the belly. That's painful. Barry, you don't like the idea? I like it so much it hurts. Then it's a deal. You're with me. 
I'm with you. All the way. We thought about a place and a time for the... The, uh... The execution? Yeah. <laughs> you bet. But... Harry, I need you to check some facts for me. If I can. Now, you once told me that Jason worked late every Monday night. That's right. He still does it? I'm not sure, but I guess he does. That's when we're gonna do it. Late on a Monday night. He'll be alone. I'll walk in, shoot him, and walk out. Oh, Phil. I thought you really had something worked out. You can't go into the building at night without signing in and signing Who out. Who said anything about getting in at night? You just... Listen. I walk into the building about five o'clock carrying one of those, those two boxes that telephone repairmen have. Yeah? There won't be any tools in it, just work clothes. I'll hang around till about eight or nine when I'm sure Jason will be alone. They're cleaning women. Sure. But by that time, I'll have changed clothes. All you have to do is look like you're, you're working or, or going somewhere to do something. They won't bother you. How will you get out? After I leave him bleeding, the way he left Mike in Korea, uh, just walk out the door, take the elevator, walk by the night guard. It might. It just might work. It will work. And all you have to do is say that we had dinner together at your place. No. No! I thought you I said... said I was with you all the way. That means I could also pull a trigger. We'll toss a coin to see who does the killing. The alibi will work just as well at your place. Do you know how to use a gun? What's to know? Hey, what about the sound of the shots? No sweat. I got a silencer. Okay, let's toss. You're sure? Dead sure. Jason Grant's office. Mr. Grant, please. May I ask who's calling? Tell him it's an old friend. Well, I'm afraid that is... Tell him it's his former partner, Harry Tolan. Hold on a moment, please. Yes? Harry Tolan. Harry Tolan? <laughs> Somebody's putting you on, Kay. Maybe. I've never met Harry, but he sounds as he would sound from what you've told me. Have I ever told you you're bright as well as beautiful? <laughs> I think maybe once... You want to talk to him? Why not? He must be really desperate to call me. I'll enjoy listening to him sweat. Your pleasure is my only desire, sir. <laughs> I think you've proved that. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Go ahead, Mr. Tolan. Jason? Yes, Harry. What can I do for you? You might ask what I can do for you this time, Jason. That will be the day. It is the day. I strongly suggest that you see me. You never strongly suggested anything. I'm all tied up, so you'd better let me hear it now. It's face to face, Jason, or it's goodbye. Goodbye. So long. Uh, hold the phone. Do you, um, do you have a number where I can reach you if I get a break in my schedule? I do indeed, Jason. Jason, that secretary of yours is something else. Well, you of all people, Harry, ought to know that I have very good taste in women. Yes, I know. What have you got in that toolbox? Don't tell me you're now a mechanic. All in good time, Jason. You had something to tell me. Yes. Well, I don't have much time. You know the saying, if you can't lick them, join them? Come on. I've decided to join you, Jason, to do business your way. <laughs> You wouldn't know how. Well, how's this for a starter? Before I tell you what you must hear, I want a certified check for $50,000. When I've finished, I want another fifty. And you know me well enough to realize that I'm not going to give you $50,000 just because you asked for it. Not even to save your life? Are you trying to blackmail me, Harry? I'm trying to do you a favor. Your life should be worth at least $100,000. You're serious. You think anything else in the world would have brought me to your office? Before I agree, answer one question. Do you know who's going to kill me? I do. Who? Me. You see, the coin came up tails. <laughs> The 
check will be here any minute. I suppose you start telling me about it. Suppose we wait for the check. Hmm, you have changed. Here's the check, certified as requested. Thank you, Kay. Not at all. Here you are, Harry. Now let's have the story. You remember Wynn Thomas. Who? Wynn Thomas. You served in Korea with him and his brother. Oh, yes, yes, I remember him. He's never forgiven you for running off and leaving his brother to die. He's a damn fool. The kid would have died anyway. I had my own neck to save. He doesn't agree with you. Well, this isn't worth $50,000. And how about this? Put that gun down. It's Wynn's gun. We tossed a coin to see who was going to use it on you. You're crazy. You're lying. Am I? You asked me about the toolbox I'm carrying. If you care to look in it, you'll find a repairman's uniform. I'm supposed to stay here tonight until you're alone. You still work late on Mondays, don't you, Jason? Yes. And I'm supposed to come in here and shoot you with a silencer you'll also find in the toolbox. You'd never get away with it. Maybe not. But Wynn's waiting at home right now, and he'll swear that we had dinner together. Now, how about the other 50? <laughs> You've got about as much chance of getting that as you have of cashing the check I just gave you. What? Try it. Uh, it's, it's certified. Not by the bank. We have a stamp here which looks authentic. Did you think you could really put something over on me? Yes, I see by your stupid face you did. Now get out of here before I call the police. They'll never believe you. I'll tell them. You'll tell them what? You see this? This is a tape recorder. Every word you said is right here on tape. Now what do you think the police will say when they hear it? Your confession, if it's really true and not a con game. Now put the gun on my desk and get out. I thought I could play your own dirty game, but you're right. I can't. But I can still kill you. The tape recorder's still on. Would you like to check it? No. Put the gun down, Harry. That's right. I'll, I'll, now I'll, beat it. I'll kill you. I'll, I promise I'll kill you. Or if I don't, win Thomas will. And that's something you'd better believe. <laughs> Murder has not been committed. Jason Grant, as you've heard, is an expert at riding roughshod over people. Believe me when I tell you that he was certain he had nothing to fear from Harry Tolan, nor was he too much concerned with Wynne Thomas. We'll learn whether Jason judged his men correctly when I return shortly with Act Two. the ruthless side of tycoon Jason Grant. But we must also be fair and remember that Jason was a family man with a wife and a son and a mistress. As we continue, Jason Grant is sitting in his office later that same evening, Monday night. The door to his office opens and his beautiful secretary, Kate Woodhouse, enters. Finished working? No, but come in and close the door. Hmm. It's quite a gown. Thank you, sir. And I do mean you, since you were kind enough to pay for it. My pleasure. You, um, had me close the door. Are you expecting someone? Just Tony. Your son? Tony, yes. Oh, well, then I'd, I'd better get... Hey, what's this? A gun? Harry Tolans. He was just here. He was going to kill me. Uh, you're putting me on. No, no, he really was. The fool. He actually thought he could get away with a stupid ploy like that. He had a whole story that I have on tape. Oh, you, you ought to put that gun away. Oh, no, no. It amuses me to leave it there. To remind me how right I was to get rid of him years ago. I only made one mistake, and that was marrying his wife. Denise. Well, how about Tony, the son you had with her? <laughs> That's to remind you that Tony is something very special to me. And That's the last time you'll ever slap me. I'm warning you. I hope this is the last time you'll need it. And maybe you need a new girl. I know exactly what I need, Kay. 
I need you as my wife. Well, maybe you'd better tell that to Denise, your present wife. I already have. I've told Denise I'm divorcing her. And I'm telling Tony when he comes here tonight. Well, if Tony's coming, I'd better get out of here. We'll go over it later tonight, huh? Stop talking and come here. Yes, Jason. Hey, excuse me, I didn't Come in, to... Tony, come in. It's quite all right. It looked a little better than all right to me. Uh, that's quite a gown, Kay. Uh, thank you. See you later, Jason. Right. The usual place? Of course. I've got to hand it to you, Dad. I've had big eyes for Kay myself, but while I was thinking, I guess you were doing. And uh, speaking of that, uh, what's that gun doing on your desk? Oh, remember Harry Tolan? Isn't... wasn't he your partner years ago? And wasn't he married to Mother? Correct. The gun is his. And what's it doing here? Harry said he was going to use it to kill me. What? After all these years? Well, he wanted money. He said he'd make some kind of deal with me. I put the whole conversation on tape and kicked him out. He sounds like a fool. A good description. Now, what I wanted to tell you... If it's was... about the VCM steel deal, I've already taken care of it. They agreed to our terms. It's not about the VCM deal. Now, one thing you still have to learn, Tony, is to listen. Remember, people are sending up signals all the time. Now, if you can read them, you'll always be one or two steps ahead of them. What if you don't like the signals? Suppose the signal light is flashing red. What is that supposed to mean? The signal I see coming up is something about you and Kay. <laughs> right. And Mother. Right again. Well, why can't you play around with Kay? You haven't without... heard what I'm going to say. I don't have to. No. Oh, all right. Go ahead. I suppose you must have known that for many years, the marriage between your mother and me was a matter of convenience. Look, Dad, I... I know how you feel about your mother, and so I wanted you to hear from me first that we've decided on a divorce. You mean you've decided on a divorce? You can put it that way if you like. But your mother will never have anything to worry about financially. Well, when you think that'll make mother happy. It'll make her rich. That's not what she wants. It's what I want. And that's all that matters. What do you want? What about her? I see a quarrel coming. I don't think we should talk about this anymore tonight. On that, I agree with you. Good night. Tony. Yes? Think over what I've been saying about your mother being well provided for. She'll be fine, I know. I think you'll see it my way tomorrow. And if I don't? Then you'll see it my way next week. <laughs> Jason Grant's still alive? Yeah. How? Well, it's a long story. Have you got the gun? No. Where is it? I left it in Jason's office. You better get up here right away. Okay, as soon as I can grab a cab. Now listen, if I'm not here, sit down and wait uh, and leave the TV on, you understand? Yeah, I got you. You better repeat it, Harry. If you're not in, I'll wait and watch the TV that you've left on. Right, and make sure you know what the show's about. Yeah, but when? Never you... mind. Get the cab. Goodbye. Mom? Tony? May I come in? Oh, of course, dear. Mom? I thought you were going to be at the office. I was. Dad told me. Oh. I, I know how you feel, and I... I I'd want... rather not talk about it. Well, that's what Dad said, but somebody has to talk about it. Why? Because... Well, because you... You don't just throw 18 years of marriage down the drain like... Oh, you'd be surprised how many people do just that. I was surprised. Honestly? Well, yes. I I could see that you and Dad weren't really getting along, but I, I thought... And you were wrong. Do you want it? Want what? The divorce. Of course I want it. You don't think I was very happy living with your father when... When what? 
Oh, Tony. Now, what's happening to us? We've never been uncomfortable with one another, and now we... Well, we can't seem to talk straight. I can. Well, fine. What do you want to say? I want to know whether you're really happy about it or whether... Whether... You see, I said we couldn't. Or whether you're just saying that to make me feel better or whether Dad forced you to say it. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Tony. How could your father force me to do anything? Oh, you know what Dad's like. Do you, Tony? Yes, I do. Please, Mom, I just want to know how you feel about this... this divorce. I told you, Tony. I feel fine. Just fine. The devil you do. And this is the first time you ever lied to me. Who is it? What? Don't be a fool. Give me that gun. Give it to me. Don't. Maybe I was wrong the way I handled it. No. Please. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, but... Well, there's just no gentle way to tell a woman her husband's been murdered. I'm sorry. I'm hysterical, officer, but I... No, it's Lieutenant, I... ma'am. Lieutenant Metcalf. Oh, Lieutenant. How can I help you? Just a few questions. But wh when did it happen? Uh, as near as the coroner tells us, around 11 p.m. How? Oh. He was shot several times uh, with a revolver. Oh. Well, I don't have to ask much about Mr. Grant. Everybody knows about him. I, I just want to find out if there was anything different about last night. I, I mean about him or his actions. Oh, no. No, nothing. He usually worked late on Monday evenings. Last night was no exception. How many people knew about this Monday night habit of his? Just, well, just about everyone. It's been in the papers yeah. and the... There have been magazine articles. Mm. Did he tell you about any special appointments that he might have had last night? No, he never discussed business with me, Lieutenant. You might ask his secretary. Miss Woodhouse? Yes. Yeah, that's being handled. Uh, Mrs. Grant, murder is a messy business, but I have to ask you this. How did you and Mr. Grant get along? How do any married couple who've been with each other for 18 years get along? There. Well, there have been rumors, and uh, I'm sorry. Yes, we were talking about getting a divorce. Whose idea was it, the... Oh, it, it was mutual, Lieutenant. We'd both gotten tired of being married. I see. Is your son in? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Have you asked the servants? Well, they don't seem to know. Oh, I'm sorry, but Tony's young, and, well, he, he comes and goes as he pleases. Where do you think it would please him to go today? If he's heard the news, I expect he'll either come home or go to the office. Thank you. You've been most cooperative. Uh, I won't bother you anymore. Hello? Mom, are you all right? Oh, Tony, where are you? At the office. I rushed over as soon as I heard. Oh. There are cops all over the place. I didn't believe... Excuse me, Mrs. Grant, is that your son? Y yes, he's at the office. Who's that? Who's there? A police lieutenant. Uh, may I speak? Well, of course. Uh, just a minute, Tony. Mr. Grant. Yes? I'm Lieutenant Metcalf. Uh, your mother seems to be in pretty good shape. I'm in charge of the case, and I'd like you to wait for me at your office. I'll be right down. But, Mommy... I told you she's all right. We sent for a doctor, and you can go home as soon as we've talked. <laughs> Morning, Duffy. Morning, Lieutenant. Where is he? Back in his own office. Lab men finished? They're packing up now. It's a big job, blood all over the yeah, joint. I saw it. Which way the kid's office? Down the hall to the left. Anyone with him? Oh, I thought it was okay to leave him alone. Mm. How did he take it? 
about the way they all do. Except... Except? We kept repeating, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. And uh, it seemed as if he really couldn't believe that his father had been murdered. Yeah. Shocked, maybe. Maybe. But from what I've heard about Jason Grant, he was a prime candidate for murder. Oh. Okay, Duff, you hang in here. I'll be right back. Mr. Grant. Uh, who are you? Lieutenant Metcalf, homicide. I spoke with you on the phone. Oh, yes. Uh, come in. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need your help. I'll do anything I can. I have to make funeral arrangements and mm -hmm. take care of Mother, sure. but... Well, how can I help? First, when did you last see your father? Last night, about 9.15. Anyone with him? His secretary, Kay Woodhouse. But she left. Did your father mention anything about appointments that he may have had later? No. Then as far as you know, you left him alone sometime between 9 and 9.30, and he had no appointment scheduled. Uh, that's right. And where did you go? Home. <laughs> now, it's no secret that your father had a lot of enemies. Can you think of anyone who look, might have... Uh, uh... Look, Lieutenant, uh, it'll come out sometime, so you may as well hear about it now. But first, I want to tell you that I still can't believe it. Believe what? My father's former partner, Harry Tolan, uh, who was also married to my mother before she married Dad, mm -hmm. Harry was in yesterday and threatened my father with a gun. What happened to the gun? Now, Dad took it from him. It was on his desk when I was there earlier. I see. And on Dad's tape recorder in the desk, you'll find the entire conversation between them. Thanks. We'll check it. But I'd like to know what it is that you can't believe. Well, I can't believe that Harry Tolan murdered my father. I, I've known him for years, and he uh, he just hasn't got the guts to kill a man. Why don't you leave me alone, Lieutenant? I never went back to his office. I didn't kill Jason, and you know it. Okay, let's go over it again, Mr. Tolan. You went to Grant's office with the gun. The gun that ballistic says killed him. I told you I left it there. You did, and we know you did. At least two witnesses saw it on his desk. Now, you told him about the plot you and Wynn Thomas had cooked up. You asked money for your information. He laughed at you. That's right. Fine. So far. And then you went over to Wynn Thomas' apartment to tell him what happened. And we watched TV all night. I can tell you the shows that oh, we... Oh, Len, you're in big trouble. You're smart enough to realize that. Forget that tired old gag about, about telling me the plot of TV shows. I want to know if you and Thomas were there all night. I told you. Now, what did he say to you when you reached his place? Hello. And then? Then? Then he... He, he offered me a drink and... And? And he, he said something about the show that was on TV. Ah, he you're a liar. Was... You've been lying all the time. I swear You that... swear you're going to swear that you hatched up a plot to kill Grant, muffed it, came back, and you and Thomas talked about what was on TV? Come on, Tolan. Get wise and get yourself some help. Okay. Okay. When Thomas wasn't there when I got there, he'd left the TV on. When did he get back? About midnight. Just about. Wynne Thomas and Harry Tolan had their revenge. Jason Grant is dead. Before the body was quietly buried, the police had arrested Wynne Thomas for first-degree murder and named Harry Tolan as an accomplice. The case was closed to the satisfaction of the public and the police. But there may be some surprises when I return shortly with Act Three. Jason Grant's death made headlines for two days. His funeral made the bottom of page one. And then Grant was just about forgotten. To win Thomas and Harry Tolan charged with his murder, Grant was still an important part of their lives. He was also much in the thoughts of his widow Denise, his son Tony, and in the report of Lieutenant Metcalf. Report from Lieutenant Metcalf, homicide, 11th Precinct on the murder of Jason Grant to the office of the district attorney. One. 
An elaborate plot was hatched, then botched. And it will be our contention that Wynne Thomas went to Grant's office to finish it off. Although we can place him at the building at the time of the murder, we cannot put him inside the office. Two. We know the gun was there and the silencer. Why then did Thomas use towels from the men's room to muffle the shots? Three. Why didn't he follow his own plot and change clothes and take the toolbox with him as planned instead of leaving it for us to find? Four. If Thomas was the killer, why didn't he take the gun with him instead of leaving it for us to find? Five. Ditto the tape recording, which Tolan admits having told Thomas was made earlier that afternoon. Who is it? Denise. Come in. Is it all right if I sit down? You can do anything you want. After all, you own me now. That's foolish. You put up my bail, didn't you? Yes. Why? I felt guilty. Guilty? About you. About the way I left you. Oh, if it's any consolation to you, Harry, I had about two months of happiness with Jason. The rest was all a bad trip. We were getting a divorce. Why didn't you get off? I... I guess I was ashamed to admit to myself or to anyone else that I'd made a mistake. Okay. And that's why you put up the bail bond money. Partly. And the other part? Well, I know you, Harry. I lived with you. You're not a murderer. I went along with Wynne's idea. But you didn't kill Jason. And I couldn't bear the thought of you being in jail. What about Wynne? Well, I wasn't married to Wynne. Well, neither was I, but... but... I've done just as good or as bad a job on him as you did on me. I don't understand. I told you I went along with the idea. Part of which was that we would alibi each other. I tried, but I messed it up. I, I, I let him down. Would you like me to post bail for him, too? Would that make you feel better, Harry? Yes, it would. Where's the phone? Will you have a drink, Lieutenant? Uh, no thanks. I thought you caught the man who committed the murder. I think we have. But you're not sure. Mrs. Grant told me that she and her husband were getting a divorce. Did you figure in that in any way? Well, yes, Jason and I were going to be married. Then you were on intimate terms with Jason Grant? Yes. A long time? Our relationship uh, started about a year ago. Then you'd know all about him. Oh, no one knew all about Jason Grant. Let's not fence. The night of the murder, when did you leave? About nine o'clock. I've already told you that. Was Grant alone? No, Tony was with him. Did he know about your friendship with his father? I think he found out that night. He, uh, he saw us embracing. And what was his reaction? <laughs> An honest answer. <laughs> They're usually the best kind. I think it was a combination of shock and jealousy. You see, Inspector, although Tony never made a pass, I knew he was attracted to me. Uh -huh. Did he know his father intended to marry you? Not at that time. Jason was going to tell Tony that night. And did he? I have no idea. Why don't you ask Tony? I intend to. Now, you've told us that you came right home... And never left the apartment. That's right. And when Grant never showed at your place, you went to sleep. Right again. Isn't that strange? I mean, you weren't concerned? You or... didn't know Jason, Lieutenant. He didn't like to be accountable to anyone for his actions. Uh -huh. And really, of all the people involved, I had the most to gain from Jason alive. Dead, I get nothing. Yes, I'm aware of that. But I've talked to the garage man in your building, and he tells me that a little after midnight, you took your car out and didn't bring it back until about two hours later. He told you that? Uh-huh. 
Well, I believe all the papers said that Jason died around 11 o'clock. And if that's right, why then he's a darling for giving me a perfect alibi. Wouldn't you agree, Lieutenant? <laughs> Why? Why would she put up bail for me? I told you when, because I asked her to. Ah, I don't buy that. Well, you don't know her the way I do. And she doesn't know me. Nobody puts up that kind of money for her for, for a stranger, no matter what she tells you. How does she know I won't skip? She took my word for it. I don't buy that either. All that talk about how she, how she felt she had done you wrong and, and the guilt she said that she was... Of course... Why didn't I think of that before? That's it. What? Guilt. That's the key word. Guilt. She feels guilty because she killed Jason. Are you crazy? I'm just getting smart. She said Jason was divorcing her. Didn't, didn't you tell me she said that? I said they were getting a divorce. Sure, sure. We both know Jason. If he divorced her, he was through with her. She'd never get a cent from him. He'd fix it with his attorney so that she spent the rest of her life chasing him for, for, for alimony or a settlement. She couldn't face up to that, so she killed him. What are you doing? I'm calling Lieutenant Metcalf. Now, you listen hey. to me. You say you didn't kill Jason. I don't know who killed him if you didn't, but I know one thing for sure. Denise didn't. And I'm not going to let you throw her to the wolves to save your own skin. <laughs> That's a noble speech, Harry. Particularly coming from a guy who threw me to the same wolves to save his own skin. You can't make me feel any worse about that than I do. That's one of the reasons she put up the bail. I told her how I felt about letting you down. Yeah? Yeah. Listen, she's got all the money in the world. She can hire great lawyers. They'll be sure to get her off. We can testify about what a louse Jason was. She's still attractive. She's got everything going for her. I don't her. care what you say. She didn't kill him. And you're not going to let me call Lieutenant Metcalf. That's right. Sorry, Harry. <laughs> Duffy, bring me the lab reports. Again, Lieutenant? You heard me. Coming up. Want some coffee with him? No, no, just the reports. Here they are. You know what you're looking for? Nope. The call from Wynn Thomas made a lot of sense. Mm, you think so? When she put up the bail, she had a motive... We got no one who'll swear she stayed home all that night. Yeah, we got no one who'll place her at the murder scene either. How about Wynn Thomas? Why don't you think he did it? I didn't say he didn't do it. It's just that there are a lot of loose ends. And I hate loose ends. Hey. You got something? Look here. In the coroner's report. Here, look. Death resulted from one bullet in the heart. Three other bullets were fired into the body all below the waist. Well, I don't see what it could be, Duffy. It just could be. Who is that? <laughs> well, I know you think I'm a very smart girl, Tony, but I really can't see through doors. I send them away, Kay. You're uptight about being here, aren't you? Yeah, sure I am. Everybody knows about you. Oh, we're never going to have a relaxed relationship until you stop worrying about what people will think. Who is it? Lieutenant Metcalf. Don't let him in. Uh, well, it's late, Lieutenant, and unless... I think you'd better let me in, Miss Woodhouse. Uh, that sounds ominous, Lieutenant. Evening, Mr. Grant. Evening. I, um... Uh, know you better than to offer you a drink. So, uh, what can we do for you? A few answers. I, uh, I'm afraid I'm all out of answers. How about you, Mr. Grant? I'll do anything to help, uh, but we've been over everything uh, so often. There's been a new development. Oh? Mr. Grant, did you know your mother has posted bail for Wynn Thomas as well as Harry Tolan? No, uh, but... Can what you think I... of any reason why your mother would do a thing like that? I haven't given it any thought. Your mother told Mr. Tolan she posted his bail because she felt badly about the way she treated him. That makes sense. She also spoke about guilt. What kind of guilt? That's the question. 
Thomas thinks it's connected with her not wanting to let an innocent man go to prison for a crime she committed. Thomas is a liar, and you're a fool for listening to him. What makes you so sure? Because I know my mother, uh, she couldn't have killed Dad any more than... any more than, than she could kill a fly. She can't account for a time around 11 o'clock. She says she was at home. We can't place her there. Oh, yes, you can. I was, I was there with her. I was there with her the whole time. Now, that's a stupid lie, Mr. Grant, and I'm sure you only said it because you're so upset. Of course I'm upset. Why don't you forget about Mother and concentrate on nailing down the case against Thomas and Tolan? Although I can't see what else you need. I need to know why four bullets were fired when the first shot killed your father. The killer hated Dad. He just, he just kept firing and, and firing. We all know how much Thomas hated him and... And why? But the bullets were fired low. It all seemed very deliberate. Well, maybe it was. Uh, maybe, maybe Thomas hated him so much... That, that he stopped in the men's room to get towels to muffle the sound of the shots when all along he knew there was a, was a silencer in the toolbox Tolan left behind? Maybe, maybe he didn't have time. It, 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 it takes time to fit a silencer onto a gun. Or maybe the killer was someone who saw the gun but didn't know about the silencer in the toolbox. Yeah, that's possible. Does your mother know you're seeing Miss Woodhouse? <laughs> uh, I take it she doesn't. How do you think she'd feel about that, her son taking right up with the same woman his father... You do play a very dirty game of pool, don't you, Lieutenant? Murder is a very dirty game, Miss Woodhouse. Well, Tony, isn't the men's room locked? Does your mother have a key, or, uh, do you, Miss Woodhouse? I think you'd better get out, Lieutenant. This is my apartment, and don't come back without a warrant. That can be arranged. What do you think your mother's going to say, Tony, when she finds out that you're in love with Miss Woodhouse, just as your dad was? You think she's going to feel she killed your father for nothing? She didn't do it. She didn't. You know she didn't do it. I just couldn't stand seeing him hurt her that way. And all for... Because he had a picture of himself as the great lover. The great, great lover. So I, I took care of him. I was glad to take care of him. The way he, he would have taken care of anyone like him. Like father... Like son, Jason Grant was dead, murdered by his own son, who was driven to kill him because of his love for his mother. I'll be back shortly. Tony Grant confessed and was sent to a mental institution. As for Wynne Thomas and Harry Tolan, they had their revenge, and they found it empty. For a while, they kept on meeting every Friday night. But strangely, after a while, they found they had nothing to talk about and drifted apart. It was almost as if with Grant dead, their lives were now without purpose. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Tony Roberts, Joan Lovejoy, Mary Jane Higby, George Petrie, and Joseph Julian. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.